In today's video, I'm going to beat Spore as the weakest possible species, the pitiful worm, but as a carnivore instead of an herbivore this time. For the traditional pitiful worm start, I already beat the game and made it to the center of the galaxy when I first tried this challenge about a year ago. Instead, today we're going to be playing as a carnivore to beat this amazing game, which is the world's greatest evolution simulator. Before we begin, shout out to Kingly Valence, as well as this Reddit post on Spore. This is where I got the idea for this challenge, as well as the original Pitiful Worm challenge, which goes back to Narataiza. If you like this, you'll like theirs even more. But first, a word from our sponsor, me. That's right, I'm the sponsor of today's video. Just kidding, there is actually no sponsor. I tricked you. However, brand new limited edition AA merch now through January 6th. You just might waste the rest of your life if you don't buy one of these things, or um, maybe even a few of them. You know, for your mom. You can put them on your shelf with his friends. You can put them in your car when you get pulled over by the police. You can keep him fresh in your fridge. You can tuck him in at night. Buy one now! Don't waste one more minute of your life without one of these things. I wouldn't want that to happen to you, man. On to the video, then. Life begins as it always does in Spore with the cell stage. Since we can't spawn in as the pitiful worm, we need to collect DNA until we can mate and rebuild our species into the right shape. With only the carnivore mouth and no flagella or eyes, we're ready to get started on our journey up the evolutionary chain. But fortunately, this phase starts off easier than the herbivore's pitiful worm run. With the carnivore mouth, we can get booped right on the snoot, and that will fling us out into the primordial ooze. I used this technique to find food, or look for an opening, or I could opportunistically dispatch my foes by juking them out and tear them limb from limb for a meal and some DNA. Since I was so slow without any flagella, I was unable to pursue the faster herbivores I would normally feed upon. So instead, I used the technique of guarding a piece of lettuce as bait, then devouring weaker species once they were in my clutches. That being said, this usually didn't work, and I spent most of the cell stage getting eaten repeatedly. 119 times to be exact just in different ways that were more or less rage-inducing. But whenever one pitiful worm died, another got up to replace it. I spent four hours guarding lettuce, then being ambushed and manhandled by bigger, stronger species, then double-teamed and devoured right before I could get any food. The only times I could get a meal were when people were literally chased directly into my mouth. I was desperate for food. Sometimes I'd call over a mate, not for reproduction, but in the hopes that a larger predator would come along and kill the potential mate so that I could cannibalize the remains. Shameful, but honestly, probably not such a bad idea. However, it usually didn't even work, and a larger predator would just eat both of us. All this as I desperately tried to eat my friends before I was brutally murdered by even stronger predators. I honestly think it got harder as meat became less common and predators got even stronger. There's almost no way to break past their defenses and spent hours getting bonked, only to wait for a lucky piece of meat. It was mostly attrition, but eventually I did acquire enough DNA to evolve, bringing an end to the cell stage and setting off to an exciting start on the creature stage. On dry land, 21 billion years later, despite all logical conclusions that any other species should have evolved first, the carnivorous pitiful worm developed lungs and began making nests on the shores after billions of years. Again, since we're blind, we're confined to a circle of darkness in our sight. Trapped with the level one mouth, all we could do was sing our sad little song to the first few creatures who would accept us as a potential friend. But unfortunately, they were the only ones who would ever accept us. And no one we met had greater than level one singing, so we couldn't get any pack mates to help us along. And so after we collected the first DNA from socializing with the jubels and the tunks, we failed to befriend the ukas. This was a turning point. Distraught at our inability to socialize with higher level creatures, I decided that we would turn to violence for the rest of creature phase. At first, it didn't work out, and we spent most of the time getting mauled and eaten by epic gigachads. Actually, just most of the time it didn't work out, so I relied upon sneaky tactics, like running up to other creatures' nests and devouring their eggs for some quick DNA points. Nest migrations were another way to secure precious DNA, but the main way we grew was through cheap pathfinding tactics, like leading other species back to our nest, then triple teaming them with worms. Take that, evolution! So we grew through teamwork. But usually that meant just getting lucky some of the time. We had one watershed moment 
when a rogue crew corps just stood still for 10 minutes in front of our nest as he was slowly devoured by four of a number. I legitimately can't believe that this happened. It secured like 100 DNA or something ridiculous. But I'd be lying if I told you that didn't backfire against us horribly, as I also got stuck in my nest in an insane loop that kept causing the game to crash inexplicably. So I had to start over the entire challenge from scratch at the cell stage, since you can't back up your saves. In a word, it was torment. But at least my untimely deaths were punctuated by cheap victories utilizing the horrible pathfinding. Maybe it was because the designers of Spore perhaps never imagined that someone would try to subject himself to a challenge this dumb. All in all, it took me over 10 hours of restarting and creating the entire planet all over again to finish this damn phase. I'll see you in therapy. And so ended the creature stage, and good riddance, the tribal stage. Everyone else hates the tribal stage but me, and I'm sick of hearing about it. It's one of my favorite phases. Unfortunately, as much as I like it, I had to restart the entire game a third time due to a starting location that was simply unwinnable. We were much too far from the water for us to squirm along the land toward any source of fish, which was the primary staple of our diet. So after another five to 10 hours of grinding, I stopped keeping track at this point. We finally spawned with our huts near the sea. We domesticated animals. We hatched offspring using the essential free baby hatching bug technique, which honestly makes this challenge possible and is totally legit. And we fished for our food, because we weren't moving around very fast, and our pathfinding looked like this. It was a nightmare. On hard mode in Spore, almost all the tribes want to kill you when they spawn in. And you have to keep giving them presents every three seconds to prevent them from hating you. And let me tell you, they change their minds fast. We could hardly keep up sending people presents and gift baskets in desperate urgency as their primitive tribesmen made tracks toward our huts with warlike intent. It was a brief spell of relief whenever the epic monsters attacked these neighbors, but this phase also took many attempts to figure out. I think our whole village was burned down at least three or four times in various diplomatic failures. But what I did figure out was that if you get other tribes to smiling blue face, which can only be obtained by sending them a present, then quickly squirming your entire tribe with didgeridoos to sing songs to them, you can secure lasting peace. This is important because otherwise we'd have to fight a war on four separate fronts, and that would be totally unwinnable. So after we secured peace with everyone and kept diplomats ready with more fruit baskets, we gathered up strength by collecting fish, then declaring war upon them one by one. As the others sent us fruit as signs of their friendship, slowly we picked them off. It was a slaughter. That is to say, we were slaughtered. But we were slaughtered only just barely in time to take out each tribe. The purple tribe, the orange tribe, the yellow tribe, the green tribe, and of course the blue tribe. With each fallen nation came the adoption of new and destructive weapons of war, namely the throwing spear, which allowed us to cope with our baffling horrible, legless pathfinding, and gang up on members of other tribes one at a time to overcome our limitations. It helped that we had predator bonuses from the previous two phases, after our peaceful fake-out to limit ourselves to wars we could win, one at a time, and so drew to a close the tribal phase, which is objectively the best phase. The civilization stage. The pitiful, primitive worm people evolved militaristically, developing stupid-looking structures to produce spore bucks, as well as armed cavalry and a naval fleet. The civilization stage was also horrible and required several restarts. Since we were so weak, we relied upon attacking even weaker city-states, while the strong, aggressive nations used all their resources to fight one another. In the meantime, we used our first mover advantage to opportunistically secure spice geysers all over the globe. Then, we paid thousands upon thousands of spore bucks as tribute to the strongest nations so that they wouldn't kill us. My plan was working. When they asked for more money, we just gave it to them and begged them not to kill us. They liked us and we were allied with the strongest. Unfortunately, once they took over the world, we were just subservient to them. That was not part of my plan, so I had to restart again and instead focus all our efforts on ruthless economic production. It didn't work again, so I had to uh, restart yet again. 
This time, we just focused on money, and my god did we grind. We leapt on more spice geysers in the ocean this time, to keep them from the brown nation. Then we declared war on the crimson nation, whom we cut off economically at the ocean spice geysers. Opportunistically, after they had thrown all their resources at killing the Cyan economic nation north of our borders, we seized their city when they were weak, crippling their expansion. Then we just let the indigo and pink nations fight it out, while we declared war on brown, and took their sea spice geysers. Then we paid them off to stop hating us, and expanded over the continent to secure four cities, unlocking the Gadget Bomb, which is basically a silly E-rated version of a nuclear missile, with surprisingly realistic graphical effects. We used this against pink, and then we lost the city again, and then I got pretty fed up with that, so I nuked their capital in an act of vengeance. They didn't stand a chance. After that, brown nations started gaining momentum, so I also nuked their capital city. At that point, we saved up 48,000 spore bucks, unlocking the Intercontinental Ballistic Missile Barrage, or ICBM for short, a highly destructive victory that destroyed most of the world in the goofiest nuclear Armageddon. Cheap? Yes. But could we have done it without nukes? Probably not. Ah, the space stage. The space stage is objectively the worst. And after playing this damn phase so many times, I refuse to play it again. So we'll simply blow up our ship over and over and venture for old time's sake as the ghost ship to the center of the universe. With a great sense of deja vu, Spore is, once again, the perfect game. For now, a big thanks to my patrons, who are actually a band of spear-wielding worm people, and a festive yuletide greeting to you all. I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. Until next time, my friends.